Hi. Today, as I promised, we're gonna try to find out how much you've learned so far. We're gonna see if you really understand the basic theory or not. With this in mind, I'm gonna lead you through a series of examples in which I'm gonna show you how to recognize polygons and how to interpret them. In the previous episode I've shown you how to define the orientation of all creases. Also, I hope you remember, I have told you that hinge creases, even though they define polygons, are most often just partially present. Even though this may seem to be a problem, it actually isn't. We really don't need hinge creases to know where polygons are. I hope you remember this from the last episode, when I told you that the easiest way to identify polygons is to analyze the positions of ridge creases. Ridge creases will without any doubt show you where polygons are. Hinge creases, even though they are supposed to define polygons, are not important. We shouldn't care about them. It sounds illogical, but it's true. Maybe it will be easier to understand the idea if I show you an example. But, before I do that, let me emphasize that the examples you are about to see are deliberately made in this way, so that certain features can be highlighted. Meaning they might look strange and meaningless, but don't worry, they are here to teach you something, and not to be a base for some future model. So, let's start with this example. As you can see, the only things visible are the grid and all the ridge creases. Please note, the ridge creases obey all the rules. They're all at a 45 degree angle and all go over the entire crease pattern. They do not appear nor do they disappear in the middle of the paper. They spread from one edge of the paper to another. I know that a crease pattern of this kind doesn't seem to provide much information, but it does, trust me. If you carefully analyze it, you will soon realize that all the needed information is there. The only thing you need to locate all polygons are ridge creases. Nothing more. Believe me. So, let's analyze this crease pattern. First let me remind you that ridge creases appear both on flaps and rivers. In case of a flap, a ridge crease looks like a letter X, meaning it's radiating outward from the flap's center toward its edges. Please also bear in mind that if a flap is in the paper corner, then only one out of four ridge creases is visible. This is exactly what we are looking for. If we look at paper corners, we'll see ridge creases that stretch out at a 45 degree angle, undoubtedly showing us that flaps must be at these corners. So, we know that polygons are in the corners, but this doesn't serve us a lot, unless we know how big these polygons are supposed to be. Well, we can find out the proper size of polygons by trying to make these polygons as big as possible, but at the same time we have to ensure that only one straight ridge crease segment is enclosed inside any polygon. If we enclose more than one straight segment, then something is wrong. Our polygon is simply too big. So let's try. As you can see, we are enlarging a polygon until it starts to enclose more than one straight ridge crease segment. Do you see it? The polygon is simply too big. So we have to go one step back. Okay. Now we know that this is a properly sized polygon in this corner. The same procedure can be applied to every other corner polygon. Do you see how we've come up with the size of these four polygons? By now we've established that there is a polygon in every corner. So far so good. We know for the most part of the paper what it is used for. Now we can proceed by trying to find additional polygons on paper edges. Please remember, if a polygon is on a paper edge but not in a paper corner, then two ridge crease segments must be visible for every such polygon. So, what we are looking for is an incomplete X, or, in other words, we are looking for a pattern that resembles letter V. If we look closely, we'll see that there are two such polygons. One is here on the left and one is over here at the bottom. So, now we know what yet another part of the crease pattern represents. Now we can proceed. We can analyze the rest of the paper to find if there are ridge creases that resemble a complete letter X. If we were to find such a pattern, it would suggest that there is a so-called central flap polygon. But a close look will reveal there's no X pattern here, meaning, central flaps or polygons do not exist on this model. All flaps are obviously on paper edges. I hope everything's clear so far. We've established the number and the size of the polygons. 
Now that we know which part of the paper belongs to the flaps, we also know that the rest of the paper must then belong to the river or rivers. There is no alternative. Having this in mind, let's try to find those rivers. We already know that rivers need to be continuous, that they cannot begin or end in the middle of a paper, they have to stretch from one edge to another. In our case, since unused parts of the paper are on its edges, it's obvious that we have a river or rivers that stretch from one edge to another. So, my suggestion is to pick one of such squares on a paper edge and to start routing a river just to see where it will take us. So, we route a river until it goes out of paper. The only thing we have to mind closely is to turn a river at a 90 degree angle whenever it intersects a ridge crease. It is all we need to think about. So let's start. Do you see how the river changes its direction when it intersects a ridge crease? As you can see, we have defined the first river. Using the same principle, we can define a second one as well. This one is longer and obviously more complicated, but don't worry. The procedure is literally the same. Just start from a paper edge and stick to the rule that a river has to turn if it intersects a ridge crease. And that's all. We've defined all elements of our model using only ridge creases. Please, remember this. Regardless of how complicated a crease pattern is don't get confused. Simply ignore everything except ridge creases. Ridge creases are the only creases you should be interested in. Now, let's analyze how the stick figure of this base looks like. You can see it in the upper right corner of the screen. Okay, let's see what do we have here? We have two large flaps that are four units long. You can see that they touch each other. Exactly like in our crease pattern. But what I would like you to pay special attention to are these two rivers colored in red and green. You can see that the rivers separate larger flaps from the rest of the model, but what is even more important to note is that the rivers also separate smaller flaps into two distinct groups. Look at the crease pattern. You can see how the red river completely encircles two smaller polygons on the left, meaning this river separates these two flaps from the rest of the model. The same applies to the green river. It encircles, thus separates these smaller polygons on the right. If you take a moment to analyze or, even better, to compare the crease pattern and the corresponding stick figure, you'll soon realize that polygons or flaps and rivers show one and the same relation to one another on the stick figure and on the crease pattern. Simply put, elements that are next to each other on the crease pattern are next to each other on the stick figure too. Also, on the stick figure, rivers that encircle certain polygons separate those polygons from the rest of the model. I believe that all of the above theory is not that complex. There is only a handful of rules you have to be aware of. But maybe it's time to show you an example that includes a river that goes in circle. Here is one such example. It is quite simple. We are going apply the same approach as in the previous example. First we are going to define all flaps. To be more precise, we are going to define the polygons that define flaps. It is not that hard. We have three flaps in the middle of the paper and six on the paper edges. As you can see, it is not that hard to find all flaps or polygons that define those flaps. You just have to take a close look. As you gain more experience, you will found them more easily. Now, what is left is to define the river. This should be even easier. Just look at the part of the paper we haven't used. Do you see it? It is a river. As you can see, it goes in a circle. And that's all. You have to admit this has been super easy. Nevertheless, to make things even clearer let's look at a few additional examples just to point out some particularly interesting details. Therefore, please pay full attention. In this example we're gonna apply the same procedure as always. First we're gonna define polygons that define flaps. Now we can proceed further to define rivers. This should be even easier. Here I would like to stop for a second just to show you one very, very interesting detail. If you look at the crease pattern you're gonna see three polygons on the lower edge. All three are bounded by the red river. The red river is separating them from the rest of the model. Now, here's my point. If you look closely, it may appear that two polygons on the left are separated from the one on the right. 
It seems as if the Red River separates these polygons. But if you take a look at the stick figure, you'll see that these polygons or flaps are not separated. There is no river whatsoever between them. So what's the catch? How is this possible? Well, if we look at the crease pattern, we'll see that the river only goes in between these polygons, leaving us with the impression that it separates them. But it doesn't. The river doesn't leave the paper in between these polygons. This is important for you to understand. If you think about it, all three polygons are on the same side of the river, on the same river bank. So if something are on the same river bank, then it is only logical to assume that the river cannot separate them. The fact that the river meanders in this way and has a very complex path doesn't change the fact that these polygons are next to one another. To make sure you understand the idea I'll show you yet another example, this time a little bit more complex. We will briefly draw all polygons and rivers in order to speed up the process so we can jump right to the problem I would like to demonstrate you. First, I would like you to look at the stick figure and to pay special attention to the six flaps in the middle. These six flaps are the blue polygons on our crease pattern. According to the stick figure the six polygons should be next to one another, they are supposed to touch one another. But, if we look at the crease pattern we can see that they don't. But again, if you look closely, you'll see these polygons are on the same river banks of both rivers, meaning, between them there is no river at all. Rivers do separate them, but they separate them only from the rest of the model, and not a single river stands between them. I'll repeat this once again, all six blue polygons are on the same river bank, no matter which river we are looking at. This is why they touch one another on the stick figure, even though they are physically separated on the crease pattern. With this I would end this episode. I hope you agree that an analysis of ridge creases alone is sufficient to define all polygons and rivers. I hope I have managed to convince you that ridge creases are the only element we should be interested in. That's all for this time. I hope to see you again in the next episode.